Oh, so cute and sweet and peaceful when you sleep and you woke up real easily. You're not that tired are you, Turbo? Look how big this puppy's gotten. Just took him to the vet a few days ago for another one of his checkups and some boosters. 40 pounds. It's a big puppy for 14 and a half weeks old. You getting so big, baby. That's a good size for 14 and a half weeks old. Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, you know, out here, as always. Gorgeous day. Supposed to stay in the 80s here for a few more days, lower 90s, and then next week, fall gets here and up and into the 70s with lows in the upper 50s, which means it's time to do some repotting. Actually, last week it was time to do some repotting. I got distracted in the sideline with a bunch of other things. It's not a big deal. There's still time to get all of that done. Look how fun this bract is on this heliconia. The size of this leaf <laughs> it's coming off of there. What happened there? So this is what's more normal and what you would expect to see. Have some modification there as far as this looking like a leaf. And then you come over here and it's just like, you, you know what, let's just go ahead and let's throw a leaf on the end of that one. It, hey, why not? And walking around looking at everything and just trying to take it all in. There's maybe just one month left of this. If even, it could be more than that. I have no way of knowing. Everything's just looking so beautiful. I wish there was some overcast. I always talk about that when the sun's like this. I hate filming, but it doesn't look like there's gonna be a cloud in the sky anytime soon. So here we are. I have a lot of repotting to do. I don't know why I did this. It's not like this whole area needs to be repotted. I need to repot the parlor palm. There is this Dracaena over here the limelight dracaena and these are plants that are doing fine but the problem is they become top heavy so it's time to go ahead and get them into something so that in the winter time when they're inside they aren't just going to be flopping over constantly every time i try and give them water and have them you know just tipping and tripping all over the place and the power palm could use it it's been in that container for a pretty long time it will appreciate it the dracaena should as well and uh, well, there are a whole bunch more. There's enough that instead of doing what I usually do where I just mix up my own soil or I'll, like buy a cheap soil and build it up and make it nicer. I just went ahead and got several bags of potting mix that I already know that I like just to speed the process up. And it's a vlog. So who knows what else is going to happen. But those are like my main priorities right now is to get those repotted and have a quick walk around. Hey Colby, Prince of Orange Philodendron that needs to be repotted. It's doing so well. But it does need to be repotted because it, poor thing, it just flops over constantly during the winter time. So I think it would appreciate it. And then you can't see it because this trellis got knocked over. But uh, I have the uh, Goriosum philodendron back there. That needs a repot as well. And several hibiscus, which are looking very thirsty, despite having just been watered, which is a sign that it's time to repot them. So I'm going to go ahead and get moving on that. Need to start gathering up some containers. I might wait. I might test fade here and just see if the sun maybe moves out of the way a little bit. Oh, and I still have all these beautiful plants here that I have not planted yet. That's because a little someone came running up to me the day after I got these plants and you know, I gave him 24 hours to hydrate and I was going to get them planted up and uh, he had a begonia in his mouth, the pink teardrop begonia. Wasn't thrilled about that. That's the begonia that's been down here. It's a perennial begonia and I really liked that plant. The one that was in here, see this? He ripped it right out of the ground. I tried to poke it back down in there just out of a moment of desperation. I was like, it'll reroot. That's really not the way to do it. You know, to get these rooted, you want to cut them into smaller segments and get the leaves off of them, at least most of the leaves, not all of them. It will need more light than this probably to get going. Although it did start to callus up here and it's putting out some new growth. So the spot's moist enough to get it going again. And I'm just hopeful that the actual plant will come back next year from the roots. I don't know why it would when the entire top was ripped out. It doesn't go through the garden and like look at plants and start pulling them up. When he's running really frantically, it's just like they end up in his mouth without even taking a pause, he'll be mid run and just and keep going. Like it's a, just an instinct he has. He's a puppy, it's what they do. But I don't want him to do that to those new plants. So I have some, uh, what are they? Those chicken wire bells, those things. I have some of those coming in the mail. And as soon as those get here, I'll get those things planted. I wanna get them in the ground. Right around now would be fine, really, next week or so. 
they're all perennials, they can go in the ground for fall gardening. It was just an alarming moment because that area right here, that's where I was going to put that hosta. Glad that I didn't do that. I was planning on covering the hosta with something anyways, but I figure with all those gingers and there's still a couple more plants coming in the mail because <laughs> I can't help myself, it would probably be best to get most of those covered up. Those bells are flipping expensive though. I only ordered two, so I'm going to have to be somewhat selective about what I put them over. They're coming from different places, so who knows when they'll get here. Isn't this beautiful? I almost cut you down. I almost got rid of this plant because they tend to be insect magnets. Usually they're covered in white flies or aphids or anything of the sorts, but really the only thing I'm seeing on this right now is some larvae. I'm not seeing much of anything on here there are some ladybugs so that's a good sign so hope maybe that's what's keeping the aphids under control i don't know they've never kept them under control before though now that the sun's shifted and the spot's getting more shady that's usually when the white flies and things start to move in so maybe i've spoken too soon i don't know but this is we're gonna have frost here within i'd say anywhere from two to 12 weeks no clue what not 12 weeks sometimes we make it till november but usually by october 15th there's some kind of white frost but a white frost isn't going to kill us best anyways that doesn't matter but it's kind of fun just walk around looking at the plants but i guess that's what the garden tours are for okay but first look at can we just appreciate this massive size of the bloom spikes on these flaming torch hedichiums that are over here the butterfly gingers they're j i don't even can i get back there Stepped on a dog toy sounding like a clown look at this big bloom spike that's got to be probably i'd say 14 inches it's definitely over a foot big flowers very nice big flowers and there's more getting ready to pop up i had mentioned before that i was just like slightly bummed out that the blooming secession wasn't really on point with how it is most years but that's normal because i had these are all divisions it's not unusual at all when you divide a clump of ginger to have less flowers right because you it was divided the year before don't see anything new coming up on these right here but there's some smaller growth in there that hopefully in the next week or so we'll start to push something out I'm telling you, the second I pick up the camera, he turns into the biggest sasshole with the barking. The same thing with phones and computers. If your attention, like if he can't see your eyes and he sees your focus on something else, he's not having it. And I'm not having that. He's got to learn to sell suit. He'll grow out of it. He's already gotten a lot better. And this begonia thing, that was like pretty much his first incident with the plants. He's grabbed like a leaf or two off of things here and there again while he was running through a space. But... That was the first time he like just ripped up an entire plant. But I think that it just came up on its own. I don't think that that was like his intention. I don't think he was going over there and being like, hey, I'm going to dig this up. I think the entire thing just popped right out of the ground, which means I probably should have given that a cutback mid-season, shouldn't I, to thicken the... Well, here, well, here we are. These will get planted up here hopefully in a few days. But I, I don't know, because the tracking on the shipping keeps changing every time I look at it. Yes, that's enough of that. Oh! Hi, Ginger, you're looking nice. I'm trying to pull the drip line out of there so I can reach in here, and grab this Dracaena, get that repotted. Ugh, and cleaned up too. I've got the first container here, partially filled and ready to go. It is a big upgrade. I know we always say, stay one to two inches on the outside perimeter, but sometimes I don't always care about that rule. As long as the plant is nice and tough, like a Duramensis Dracaena, which is what this is, it'll be fine being bumped up in something like this. This isn't going to hurt it. There isn't really any root wrap going on in there. I'll go ahead and just slightly loosen the sides. The problem I had was that all the other pots that I was digging through that I could have bumped this up into that were just a smidge larger on the outside perimeter, I, I'm pretty sure that it would still, the plant would just keep tipping over. So this will do. I am planting it down very low and I'm doing that intentionally so that during the winter months or just the off season when i have this plant inside when i water i can flood the top and not have to sit and very slowly add water to it probably have that up a little bit higher because the soil is going to settle when i water it in yeah it should be good hopefully that wasn't too loud through the microphone i warned when i was editing that zinnia video that i need to uh, be more aware of where my microphone is in relation to noisy things. Yeah, that's better. That's about an inch down. And this will settle down some more in there too. 
All right, a little bit chunky, but that's okay. It's like to make sure to tilt them and scoot them around. So make sure that soil's all the way down around those roots and that the plant's actually standing up straight. I can see, you guys can't see, but it is growing at a slight angle, so this would be the time to try and correct that. Yeah, like I said, I know that that probably looks like it's too much. When you look in the, at the plant, like completely in proportion, that's about right. That's about where I'd want that to be. I forgot, I needed to put on a glove. I have a scraper on my hand. Sorry if that grossed anybody out. I'll go ahead and remember to put that on. I had thought about adding a biotone starter into this, but it says it has the mycotone in it already, which is, you know, that's what the biotone starter has going for it. There's a list of all those fun things here on the bag. The thing with any type of like powdered mycorrhiza is that you just don't always know if it's actually doing anything. Sometimes a good way to introduce mycorrhiza is actually to take like a handful of native soil and blend that in. I'm not really too worried about that, especially because this already has all the good stuff that I mix in with my potting mix. It already has the humus, the perlite, limestone, earthworm castings, alfalfa meal, kelp meal. I don't usually use feather meal, but it's in there. And then the extract. Anyways, I actually avoid using that word often on the channel because the debate around the pronunciation of that word really, oh, it gets on my nerves. And for the parlor palm, oh, Okay, time to start barking, huh? No, that's way too big. That's not gonna work. I'm gonna dig around and find a different pot. So much noise, so much barking. So I did some digging around and the only pot that I think is going to appropriately fit that power pump is right here, which is, you know, this is fine. That shouldn't be there anyways. Something should be there because I need something to protect that outlet from water. I know it has a cover on it, but it doesn't seem to matter if it rains it still shorts out. An electrician looked at it and they're like, I don't know. Thanks, that's useful. And I could be wrong. This may not even be a good upgrade. No, 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 that'll be good. Maybe about an inch on the outside and this is way down in there. So there'll be a lot more room for growth inside of this container. But I do need to find something else to put over that outlet. I don't want to forget to do that. I'm really going to regret it if I do. Don't worry, I am going to water all these in. My plan is to get the repots done and keep them right around this spot right here, Bird of Paradise over here does shade things fairly well. Talk about that some more here in a minute. Oh, my glove. I'm gonna go put on my glove. Personally, I enjoy the way the soil feels on my hands, but with a big cut on the hand, I know that might gross people out. Sealed and protected. I use the liquid bandage stuff on it, but it's still very visible. So I'll make sure to keep that covered up for y'all. There's a lot of pine needles in here. May as well get those out while I'm at it. It's pretty good, nice healthy roots. Is my camera recording? Good it is. I never intended to use this cabinet as a potting bench, but I suppose it's okay. I'm just trying to stay in the shade so that the camera doesn't overheat. Filling this in. Probably going to take a minute because that gap isn't all that big on the outside. And that's okay for palm trees. But yeah, the yucca yucca thing, it doesn't like actually upset me, but it's just one of those things where I'm just like, is this really worthy of debating? Because yucca, Spanish. That's the pronunciation. Usually when you're talking about it, when it comes to cooking, then most people say yucca. When you're talking about gardening, most people say yucca. You can say them both. It's okay. As long as everybody understands what you're talking about, it's not a big deal. Now for palm trees, I usually amend the soil somewhat with some sand, something with some grit in it. But what I've... Oh, oh, that was a messy spell. From what I've seen with the Espoma potting mix, it's draining really well in every container that I've been using it in. Holds on to moisture just about perfectly how I would want it to, so I'm not really going to worry about that. I should probably stay on topic here. With the palm trees, I don't mind if the pot's just a smidge tighter because a lot of palms, the majority of the ones that are grown indoors, they don't mind. In fact, they usually appreciate their roots being somewhat confined, somewhat to an extent. Palms are one of those plants, actually the same thing with the Dracaena, who just did over here. There are some of those plants where people will keep them in the same container, including myself, for years and years and years. Much longer than we should. This power palm, I, it's probably been in the same container for four or five years. So this was definitely due for an upgrade. I wasn't really having any trouble keeping it hydrated, which says something for power palm because they tend to be very thirsty palm trees. But what I was noticing was that the new growth wasn't coming out with the deep green that you want to see on there despite being fertilized and getting palm gain and having its soil amended you know about every i guess once a year probably is about how often i amended the soil on this one and that's indicative of that 
potting mix being barren. You know, things are in containers, so water just flushes all that good stuff out of there. So after a few years, it's usually a good idea to go ahead and just move them into a larger container. They'll appreciate it, just have healthier growth out of them. Not like they're gonna die if you don't. They'll be okay, but that just seems easier. I love this power palm. I've had this one for such a long time, and I think I talked about it in a vlog, I don't know, a couple months ago. Whenever I pulled the plants out of storage, sorry for shaking the focus there, but I was, the thing I was excited about was that I was able to start pulling these old sheaths off. When they start to go brown, you can pull those off and then get the little rings on those trunks and then you just, look at that. Come on, how adorable is that tiny little trunk? I love it. It takes a long time to get them to start doing that, but once you do, eventually within a few years, it'll start to look kind of like a, like a bonsai palm. And you can actually do bonsais with these and see that this isn't going to tip over anywhere near as easily. When it was in this container right here, it was so top heavy that when I would water during the winter time, the water would hit it. My hose, the hose in my grow space only goes so far. So I have to stand somewhat far back from where this plant goes and the water would hit that and it would just knock it over. It was really frustrating. And I, like I said, it's been a few years. It's just time to go ahead and give this baby some fresh soil. Oh, and pardon the gangly peperomia that's been in the background. Uh, this was a broken piece I just stuck down in there. Just to see if it would take root. And it's been doing okay. So I think it will. I was really glad that when I looked at those roots when I pulled out of the pot that there weren't all kinds of bugs down in there because I was suspicious that there were going to be a lot of snails in there, but nope. It's a good sign. The power palms do like to be kept more on the moist side. The soil shouldn't dry out for too terribly long, so they tend to attract the snails, at least for me, when they're outside. When they're inside, that's not usually as big of a problem. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this down below. It's so cute. I love power palms. I need to, what's next? Hey, Pungian, bouncing off the walls, aren't you? I know, abrupt change. So my batteries died and I came in to change them out. Those were dead too. Apparently I had unplugged the charger by mistake. Oops, where are we charged? Where are you going? You gotta go somewhere? You have an appointment? No, Pumpkin hasn't been around much lately because she's been hiding from the puppy. All my two favorite things, my cat and my Bissell Crosswave Cordless Max. Hey honey, I love you so much. And I did mean that. I love cleaning the floor with that thing. Good girl, Pumpkin. Yes, you are. You say hi to everybody. Nothing wrong with a little break and get some pumpkin time. Such a sweetheart pumpkin. Such a sweetheart. Turbo's out on a walk, hence why the freedom and liberation she feels. Actually, over the past few weeks, she's been really great with him. She's not, doesn't seem to be afraid anyway. She walks around right in front of him, puts him in his place when he wants to sniff her and she's like, eh eh. I don't think so. She started coming back to the kitchen now to get her breakfast and lunch and dinner for a while. I was having to feed her in the other room because she's like, I'm not coming in there. Nope, not with that thing running around. There she is, I know. She hasn't been around in a while, you good girl pumpkin. It is, oh, very zoomed in there. It is getting darker out. <laughs> I don't think it's quite time to justify the lights. Quite time to justify the lights. That sentence did not make any sense at all. I guess it did a little bit. It's gonna be dark fairly soon. How yeah, they put one switch for the lights right here and the other one in the kitchen. What was that about? Someone clearly was not thinking when they made that decision. Hey fish, you gonna hide? Yep, that's what I thought. A bright back pumpkin, I love you. Yes, I now keep my shoes and a tiny trash can in the chair because you know, puppy. There's a shelf in my laundry room where I could keep the shoes, but I don't know. The birds run around in there and like there's always somehow bird food ends up inside of them. Okay. Next plant, oh, there's a little dent in there. That's fine, I don't care. Wanna see the most ridiculously underputted Dracaena ever? <laughs> Look at this. Look at how tiny the container is on this thing. So I got this a few years ago just as a feller plant. It came with a bunch of annuals. I think that was, there was a mandevilla, that's what it was. It's like one of those assorted tropical things where there was a mandevilla, maybe some impatience, and then this Dracaena <laughs> coming out of it. and. The Dracaena, it's just, it kept growing, because that's what they do, despite it having, like, really not the most hospitable conditions for its roots. So this is sort of the definition of a plant that's not going to want to stand up, right? I think that much is clear. This is a huge upgrade for this plant. Will this stand up on its own, though? Because this is it's a pretty flimsy container. I still think that that's appropriately sized. This will be fine for it, but I'm actually, I'm wondering if that's going to hold up or if it's still gonna flop over. Just realized my microphone was hanging upside down this entire time. Hope you've been able to hear me. <sighs> the glove, I gotta get the glove. Better. 
roots look good. Whole thing's pretty dry, but that's to be expected when a plant this size is in a container that small. And it's a the marginata type dracaenas. I don't tend to water them an awful lot. I keep this in a spot that's pretty dry. And the marginatas, you know, they don't need as much moisture. Keep forgetting, don't talk while shaking a plastic bag. The marginata type dracaenas, they don't need a ton of moisture when they're outside and it's nice and humid anyway. So I have always just kept this in a spot where the sprinklers don't hit and the garden could use a little bit of life and that's always done fine with that. Oh yeah, I don't, that shouldn't tip over. That should be totally fine. I did, I don't think I showed it. I gave the roots a little, sorry, that felt weird, a little tickle on the bottom so that they would be loosened up enough to go into this container. And now maybe the growth on this can, well, the growth will probably stay the same. There's never been any issues with that. It's done a fine job growing. Also, if you can hear like a slight hissing in the background, I don't know if that's gonna come through. That's one of my drip emitters. It is whistling and annoying, and I'm not sure why it's doing that. You can kind of see how this growth is crooked. And so is that one up there, it's going off that way. That's because the whole plant was leaning because that pot was so tiny. So that should be good. That's gonna hold that over for a few years at least. This next one's a fun plant. I've had this for a long time. This is the mother and daughter croton. It's called that because the ends of the leaves have these little spoons that come off of them. So it's like the mother and the daughter. Isn't that fun? I love this plant and uh, it hasn't been repotted and Gosh, I don't even know. I think I've only repotted this once. That was probably three or four years ago. I'm also using this as an opportunity to check for bugs. And there's this sticky sap in there that I thought was a mealybug nest, but it's not. I, don't know, I think it was a spot that probably got broken and a bunch of sap just came out of there. Feels gross. I don't like it. I'm gonna move it from there into this more squat proven winter's container. I would like to use a container that's just a smidge bigger but I don't have an in-between size for these pots unfortunately. This is the next size up and then after that they're like 16 inch containers. So that's just gonna have to do. It'll at least be happy to get a slight repotting. It's just it's such a pain. Roots look good. Here's something though that is good to take note of. You can see how there's some more mush in here. That's because it's been in this mix for so long that it started to break down. I've talked about this in videos before. If you go too long without repotting, that sometimes that loose blend will start to turn into a mud. So I'm going to go shake some of this out into the landscape and get into that fresh mix. Okay, that was nowhere near as bad as I thought it was. It was just kind of localized that spot, but I still tried to shake out as much of that as I could so that you know, so the soil drains well. Another reason I prefer to have a larger bump up than this is because it takes such a long time getting the soil down into those little cracks. This is probably, I'd say half an inch to an inch larger on the outside diameter from the original pot, but it is a smidge deeper. You could see, maybe you could see, the plant had settled fairly far down in here. So there was only like that much root ball. So in that regard, it's actually, a decent amount more soil in here, more than enough to get it through until next summer. I probably could have waited to repot this one, but I just remember last winter, I was having to water it more than I would have liked to. Like clearly it was thirsty. And that's usually a good indicator that it's time to repot the plant. Hopefully you were able to see those roots on the camera and they weren't out of control. This wasn't root bound. And this particular croton, hopefully the camera's in focus. It's all the way up there, I have no idea. This particular croton has been a pretty easy one to grow. Not as simple as the freckles. That's the easiest croton I've ever grown, but this one really hasn't been very fussy. There we go. Yeah, that's nice. Liking the colors over here too, even though nothing that's right here is staying right here. It looks good. Like the color and the texture. The power pump's really buried in there. And this is why I always save my plastic nursery pots. You get to a point where you have so many house plants, it's like you, you, not everything can be in a pretty pot. It's just not practical. I end up surrounding these with other plants. You can't even see those during the summertime. That pot won't even be visible when I put it back in its spot. Not seeing any pests or anything on here. Okay, next up. A very sad hibiscus. Dropping it like that surely wasn't helpful. I didn't think it was gonna go down that hard. Filling the space up, gotta back the camera up. This is gonna be a huge upgrade for this plant, but it deserves it. This poor hibiscus. I've been meaning to repot this one for such a long time. Really should have done it in the spring, but I forgot about it, so this will have to do. Got all those leaves out of there. The roots look fine. No rot. Give them a little bit of a tickle so that they fit in there just how they need to and angle it this is going to be getting a huge prune here 
so I probably don't need to worry too much about the angle. I actually probably should have pruned this beforehand because this entire thing wants to go off in the other direction there. You see that? Yeah, probably should have done that sooner. I know, this is going to seem harsh for the good of the plant. I could root those, but I don't feel like it. This variety has always grown so incredibly well, even in that tiny pot that it was in. All right, give those a drink. I already watered in the, uh, what was it, the other two? Back here, the Pyrrhor Palm and the Dracaena Limelight. Camera died, I went ahead and give those a drink earlier today and I'm just gonna flush that through. Pretty typical repotting stuff. Now, the reason that I would have preferred to have, that is a beautiful shot, just water and dirt everywhere. So pretty. The reason I would have preferred to have repotted the hibiscus in the spring is, well, one, that's just kind of the more appropriate time to repot most of our house plants. But out of all of these plants here, maybe with the exception of the croton, these tend to throw more of a fit when they get moved around. So it would have been nice for it to have those extra months to establish itself before it goes inside. But this should still be an ample amount of time. It should have at least 30 days. So it's not gonna establish itself in this container in 30 days. That would be amazing. That's really fast, but it'll be established enough where moving it shouldn't be a big deal. And I'm gonna put this on drip. All of these are going up on drip actually, but not until they've been watered in thoroughly for probably a few days. And even then, after a few days, I'm still going to keep watering them and watering them, watering them by hand. The drip with freshly potted house plants, I consider, <laughs> I consider that to be more supplemental than anything. It's just to help get them by if for some reason I can't get out and water them. But really want these to establish themselves into these new pots. Hand watering is just my opinion, the way to go. To really make sure that the water is fully flushing through and around that root ball so that the roots will want to expand out and grow. Some drip heads, you know, they're pretty direct and go right down to those roots. And if the soil around those root balls doesn't have some moisture in it, then, you know, they're never going to want to try and expand their roots out. You get it. I got to keep them watered. I think that that's it for tonight. Maybe in the morning I'll do the aeroids. I haven't decided if I'm going to repot the philodendron prince of orange but the gloriosum needs to be repotted and I will probably scoot these back to where they go in the morning, more than likely. The problem is the hose, it's really hard to wrap it through Turbo Town and get it over to those corners. So I don't know, I may end up moving some of those to a position where the hose is easier to reach. Yeah, I tend to do a lot of repotting in the spring into early summer, and then when it gets really hot, I stop with all of that and it's finally starting to cool down to where I feel safe to do more repots and about at least 30 days out from frost, hopefully. So they should be fine. It doesn't matter. I keep the growth space warm enough that it honestly, it doesn't really matter. If I were just moving into the house where it's 70 degrees, it would probably still be okay. But in like two weeks, maybe not so okay. Oh, love these zinnias. These two, so cute. You got a petunia stuck to your harness turbo. This new harness showed up yesterday and been keeping it on him, trying to get him used to wearing it. Really wasn't into it when I first put it on him, but He's getting there. Love that there's a petunia stuck to the side of that thing. What are you doing over there? Such a cutie, cannot see my screen because the sun is right in my eyes. Okay, now I can see it. There's actually only like two plants left that I really need to get repotted today. The Gloriosum, I, I'll show it to you in a minute. I was looking at it and then trying to find a pot for it. It just, it's not gonna work today. I had to order a different pot for that plant. This <laughs> doesn't look great. I recognize this one. This is the Pseudoranthemum Black Varnish. This was pot up with my Adenidia Palm. And I had talked about in the garden tours wanting to try and bring this in for the winter time. The Adenidia Palm goes off to a greenhouse and the greenhouse, they only take care of the palm trees, anything you have planted around them. They don't guarantee it. In fact, I'm pretty sure they tear it all out to save on water or something. I don't know. And put some soil in there and then remembered, forgot my glove again. Oh, and I accidentally pulled up one of the caladiums that was in the pot with it. Got a whole bunch of soil in here that's straightened out. I, I'm wondering if I'm going to have to cut this back. I think I probably will. The pseudoranthemums are pretty thirsty plants. So just in anticipation of that, just like I was doing with the Dracaena, I'm going to make sure to keep a good enough of a margin here so that it's easier to get a lot of water in there at one time. And oh, uh oh. Okay. All right, that's the end of that pool noodle. Not gonna be used, hey, hey, hey. No, turbo, <gasps> no. Uh, puppies, gotta love them. So yeah, you see what I'm talking about? It's really tall, or what I was getting ready to talk about. I might need to do a cutback on this just because I wasn't able to get a ton of the roots out with it. 
when I pulled it, I got as many as I could. You know, that pot that it's in is mostly roots from the Adenidia palm, so I don't know how well this is going to fare like that, but I'm going to move it into less light, and I think that that will help. Really, any plants, when they've just been repotted, I prefer to keep them with less light just for a couple weeks, just to help avoid stress. You can see, I mean, it's already upset from being pulled out. I may go ahead and give that a chop in half. That's probably just, I should do that, right? <laughs> Just sitting right on top of him. Okay, dogs always know how to make themselves comfortable, don't they? I keep getting distracted by the puppy. What I'll do, since I've been on the fence about cutting this back, is I'm gonna keep that consistently moist, just like with everything else, because it's just been repotted. I'll give this up to 48 hours. If it looks like the foliage just isn't going to want to rehydrate from having the roots torn up so much, then I'll go ahead and chop it probably down by about 50%. It's not going to hurt the plant to cut it back. In fact, it's good for it. It will encourage it to put out more roots. It will send those hormones back down the stems and tell it to get back on top of spreading those out. But it's a plant that I enjoy very much, so I would prefer to not do that if I don't have to. But in the long run, it would probably be smarter to go ahead and cut that back. Just keep getting distracted. Every time I look over there, there's like a whole new situation going on between the dogs and the tortoise. I'm glad that's done. Got a whole bunch of things repotted. The Gloriosum, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but I wanted to show this. Look at it. Isn't it adorable? A little bit wonky, doesn't really want to stand up in its pot. This is a perennial, one that I've been trying to get my hands on for many years. The camera, you, don't, you didn't come to work today, huh? Any guesses before I tell you what it is? Comment down below. Okay, time's up. The Pink Cascade Salt Cedar, the Tamarix. The Pink Cascade Salt Cedar, these will get up to 12 feet tall. They have this really beautiful, airy, wispy foliage on them. And then they put up sprays of gorgeous, beautiful pink flowers. They aren't seen for sale all that often. That's because these plants have a bad reputation. <laughs> the Salt Cedars are incredible incredibly invasive in certain areas. They are not at all invasive where I live, not one bit. This comes from Plant Delights in North Carolina. They've been growing theirs for a very long time and they say that theirs, they've never had any issues with it, throwing out seeds or anything like that. It's more if you live in a drier climate that you have to be concerned about these. I wouldn't suggest anybody plant one of these until getting online and thoroughly doing your research as to the status for not just your state, but your specific area when it comes to these plants. Here in St. Louis, it's not a problem. It's kind of like the Badleyas, butterfly bushes, the Pacific Northwest and plenty of other areas. You're only supposed to plant these sterile types because they can really take over. Well, this will take over way more than those will, but like I said, not here. I am so excited about this. They are super cold hardy all the way down to 3A. I believe is what the tag said. It's so wonky and crooked. I'll try and get up a smidge closer so you can see how detailed that foliage is. Isn't it just fun. That kind of icy blue to green color. I've wanted one of these since I was a little kid. There's a house around here in St. Louis that we used to drive by when I was really little and you could just see the top of one of these coming over the person's fence. I've been mesmerized by the plant ever since from seeing the pretty foliage that comes up over the fence and then when it just gets covered and all those pink flowers. Really happy and excited about this one. I've been shopping from Plant Delights for years and it's just been like just strokes of luck that every time I'm placing an order, these are usually sold out. So I went ahead and actually did the thing where it's like notify me and it was available. So I got one. And with it being hardy all the way down into zone three, I'm not worried about this being a plant that goes into the ground in the fall. Most perennials, that's not really something you have to worry about. It's when I'm planting something like a crepe myrtle or a hardy palm, those I want in the ground as early in the season as possible so they can really put their roots out and get some energy stored up and get over like the shock of being transplanted. But if it's actually hardy to my zone, I don't have to worry about that. I love it. It's so pretty. But again, do your research before buying these. Want to make sure that it's not going to take over and become a problem. And then perhaps even consider if you just live upstream of an area where these are potentially invasive, then maybe. It's not a great idea to plant them. Could easily do an entire video on the invasiveness of the salt cedars. Actually, if you just Google it, there are tons of videos all over YouTube about why they were introduced, which was to, for erosion control and waterways and areas in the Southwest and that not, well, they're just everywhere down there. I'm loving that plant. Cannot wait to see this one grow. And here's the Gloriosum. Look at this, look at how badly that needs to be repotted. I just don't have a container that's the size that I would prefer for this plant. 
I like for these to go in more of an oblong, oval-typed container, and all the containers I have when I bump them up to make it big enough to actually fit the whole thing in there, it still is like right to the edge and really deep. I don't want that. I want a shallow container. So there's a pot coming in the mail. Hopefully it'll be here in a week or so, and then I'll get that moved into a container. It's ready for it. It's, it's time to go ahead and get that repotted. The Prince of Orange, I pulled it up. The roots look fine. The roots on plants like that, like it's really just more of an anchor. So I, the thing about it flipping over, I can just drop that into a heavier pot. It's one of those things where like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's growing so well and there's not any rot. The soil hasn't broken down to a mush, so it's fine. Don't want to be out here unnecessarily repotting anything, trying to make sure it's only what needs it right now. I forgot to mention the caladium down here. So that's not going to grow throughout the winter time with the plant. That should start to go dormant on its own here in the next few weeks. And then I can let it die back and then pull it up and store it with the rest of them. If this were a plant that I keep on the drier side during the winter time, like a pack of stackies, during the winter I don't do much with those. I just kind of let them chill. Then I would maybe potentially leave the caladium in there and just let it chill with it. Just let the foliage die back and let those bulbs stay in there. I've done that with plenty of plants before and it's been fine. But that's only with plants that I overwinter dry and cool. <laughs> so stinking cute, Turbo. Yes, you are a good boy. All right, that's gonna do it. Thanks for hanging out while I get a few things repotted, have things moving in that direction. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. I just realized this is the last video of summer. Next video that comes out will be the 22nd, it'll actually be fall, which I know some of y'all are really excited about. I'm happy for those of you who are excited about fall. I'm, I'm not that person. Working on it though. Actually, I should pull that Pharaoh's mask out of there too. And I'm gonna hold off. It's supposed to cool off in like two days and I think that that would be a better time because it's going to be tricky getting many roots out of that just like it was with the Pseudoranthemum because the containers just have so much palm rootage in there that it's hard to get much out. So now nah, I'm gonna wait for it to cool off just a smidge. I think it'd be smart to wait for things to cool off a little bit. You guys having a pool party? All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.